Good morning. Good morning, AI fans, and welcome back to beautiful Atlanta, Georgia. We are here on day three of Supercomputing 2024, and the fun is still rolling. My name is Savannah Peterson. So excited to be having these conversations this week, and particularly excited about my next conversation with James from DDN. Welcome to the show, James. Hello. Thanks for having me. Yes, absolutely. You, we're, we're going to unpack a lot. You've had some big announcements this week. We had Alex on the show as well. But before we even get there, how has this show been for you? It's got to be quite a moment for you guys. It is. It's been ramping up to this year for three years, it feels. Like we had a little bit of AI-ness like a few years ago. Yes. Now it's like it's gone really massive this year. So uh, everything's gone totally crazy. Our, our sort of data summit, brand new customers from across the spectrum of enterprise, all experimenting with AI, moving into large-scale AI. So a very different feel from previous years. Oh, fun. Yeah, I want to talk to you a little bit about that. I, and I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, when we were in Dallas, it felt like a whisper, and we were talking almost as much about quantum as yeah. we were about AI. Yeah, exactly. Then in um, Denver last year, you know, definitely some velocity. And now it feels like, to your point, it's mainstream. I feel yeah. like even our friends and family know what we do now. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> there's so many brand new booths from these AI cloud partners and stuff like that, we were never seen before. So they're all here now. There's, there's like yeah. 10 or 50 of them right over there. Yeah, yeah, I think there's over 30,000 people here yeah. too, which is pretty cool. You had some big announcements this week. Talk to us about those. Yeah, well, the past few years, we've been seeing this same ramp, right? So a huge ramp in AI, and those customers come to DDN because we provide this data intelligence platform. Hey, Ryan. And this year, we've been announcing several new developments of that platform. Um, and, you know, the magic of the platform really is it enhances the stack itself, the stack it's in. Yeah. The storage, the networking, the compute, the infrastructure. But it also enhances, accelerates, and optimizes above the stack, where the applications live, the inferencing, the AI model training. We've been making various enhancements to accelerate even further with even less power. And we're, those three announcements are really more around those sort of areas, um, plus simplicity and uptime. So let me go through them. Yes, please. That's so, a holistic approach and solution is yeah. what you just described. Yeah, let's I mean, break it down. We were already doing pretty well. So we're already the densest and fastest AI appliance on the planet. And we just doubled that. Casual. Yeah. And you support over half a million GPUs. Easy. Which we... <laughs> we're right there. We'll be I love it. Right. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So our largest customer has 100,000 GPUs, but overall right now we're supporting 500,000 GPUs globally. And we've just doubled the density of our appliance. So the performance efficiency and the capacity efficiency are crucial to our customers. Yeah. We want to minimize the data center space and power because that's what we're running out of right now. So a huge day data centers. They're struggling for power, struggling for space, and struggling for GPUs. So what we, our job is, is to A, help them reduce the amount of instructions they spend on our piece, <laughs> and deliver new acceleration and turbocharge the infrastructure and the applications to get more out of the infrastructure. So we see a data platform not just as you know, a piece of storage, but something that enhances the applications. Accelerates and enhances the applications. And so doubled the density of our flash systems. We've introduced- That's our, not a casual, that's not iterative. That's big, a nice link numbers. there. Yeah, I know. And then we also introduced a new A3i platform. So A3i, uh, AI data appliances. Lex, can this ship? Six years ago, NVIDIA came to us after looking at many vendors and they chose DDN to support their first Celine supercomputer. And that was with the AI 400. Oh, man. That's then, a vote of confidence yes, in the it, earlier days. It was then, but even better, the second generation, they made the H100s, and they came to DDN again, and they bought our second generation appliance, the AI400 X2. And now, we built the AI400 mm -hmm. X3, and that's been specifically designed to support the new Blackwell GPUs. So those Blackwell GPUs now have much higher memory bandwidth, much higher memory footprint, and of course, they need a data infrastructure that's gonna cope with that huge turbo boost in performance at the GPU level, and that's exactly what we've done. So that's number two, massive performance enhancement, performance density enhancement, efficiency enhancement with the new AI400 X3 appliance. Peace. And then, gain your socket. There's even more. I was so, gonna say, but wait, there's more. There's more. Our, One more thing. Our exascalar parallel file system. This is really what's been driving the largest number of new AI models in the world. So we're behind NVIDIA's large systems, we're behind XAI's large systems, we're behind large number of superpods um, as the data appliance. And that software 
is architected really ideally to push data into GPUs. So when you're running these models, you need to push data, push the models themselves, and bring the checkpoints down. It's quite a complex activity, but for maximum stability and efficiency, you use this software to do that very efficiently. Yeah, it's like two pedals in a car, essentially. Well, we are, I think uh, NVIDIA put it best, actually. We are the fuel for that engine. So data is the fuel for the GPU engine. Ooh, I love that analogy. Yeah, I'm going to borrow that for both of you. It's a nice one. Yeah. And so on the exascalar side, we've done three things. A, we've implemented a scalable data reduction. And that means you get more for less. Mm -hmm. And you can keep it on, which sounds a funny thing to say, but with many storage technologies, you can get data reduction, but if you switch it on in the face of 10,000 GPUs or whatever, right. it kind of starts going slower. So we built a new way of doing this data reduction, which means we can scale that compute infrastructure and still maintain very, very efficient data compression. How do you do that? We tap into the Linux kernel compression methods and run this compression right next to the application. And that means you're compressing over the wire and in the storage, so it's like double bonus. Yeah. Um, you get much more for your, for your dollar, much more for your power. Right, yeah. Yes. Second thing we've done is make our customers' lives much easier. We've built a management framework around our parallel file system that allows them to configure, set up, change, manage, control, monitor systems with a brand new set of APIs, much, much simpler than any other parallel file system in the world. And then finally, but not least, we've implemented online upgrades. So the large supercomputers in the world, AI or HPC, as of today, in fact, as of last August, they are able to keep everything online, applications running 100% in the very largest systems, um, whilst we upgrade the software across the data infrastructure, which is kind of a really big challenge for us. And we've been- It's a bit of a it. paradigm shift. I mean, downtime is a part of tech yeah. life, generally speaking, and you're telling me you're able to evade that? It has been. Of course, you can, you know, typically, historically, you can do it at small scale. Right. We're not in that scale anymore. Well, I was going to say, not with what we're talking about. This is, this is scale. This is the definition of yeah. scale. Thousands of GPUs, thousands of CPUs, thousands of network ports, and often hundreds of petabytes of flash storage. Keeping all that online while you upgrade the whole infrastructure is a difficult thing to do. And it's taken us many years, but now we're here. Exascalar 631, released in August. We've done it. Wow, that's so impressive. So no wonder the most important and notorious companies in, in this space are, are powered by you. You're behind, you know, to your point, there's no surprise you're fueling big companies like NVIDIA. Give me some examples of what this type of technology can empower from a, a customer facing or a human facing application. Yeah, so our customers, they are performing the toughest AI challenges out there in the world, right? So that means there's two halves to that story as well. You're, you're either training this model or you're running this model in production. Mm -hmm. And both are hard and both require data. Lots of data. Yeah. And the training phase has really been happening intensively over the last two or three years. Um, and to do that training, you need to have a large infrastructure, maybe a thousand GPUs, maybe 10,000. Our largest customer has a hundred thousand and you run a model across the memory of all those GPUs, mm -hmm. and you run it at multiple epochs. So it takes months to train one of these new models that we know, like the Chappie D-style style right. thing, and like ROG. It takes months to train, and so the data needs to be ready to keep those GPUs bus busy when they ask for data. Otherwise, you might have you know, a $100 million, billion dollar data center sitting there just waiting for data. So that's the critical thing we need to just make go away entirely. So all we're doing is making those GPUs productive 100% of the time. And that's, that's really what we've been doing for our customers. And that's accelerating data loads, accelerating model loads, and managing those checkpoints because large infrastructure fails all the time. And you don't want to get to the, like the last day of the month and nearly be ready and have it fail. Right. Right. So you checkpoint regularly, you save that data. So if there is a failure, just restart from the nearest checkpoint. And that's more data moving backwards and forwards. And we're the company that does that most efficiently for our customers. I would imagine that helps with utilization, time to value, ROI, cost reduction. This is what I was saying at the start. It's like you purchase, you choose a, a data vendor, a data platform vendor. Yeah. And you kind of, normally you'd think, well, I'm just buying some place to put my data. But actually the impact that data infrastructure has on the rest of the productivity 
can be 25, 30% more. Right. Just by removing all the IO wait time, then those GPUs stay busy. That's so it's, a huge it's massive. improvement. It's massive. It's massive. And, and, and decreasing waste, oh my gosh, my mind is just racing. Are there any oh, so case studies or stories of this really making an impact for your customers that you're able to share with me? Um, a lot. I mean, I mentioned, Let's hear it. I mentioned NVIDIA. So NVIDIA ch chose us and, you know, this is now six years ago, I think, with NVIDIA Celine. They were the first to build these very large scale models. So it was Megatron LM at that time. And so we've been working with them backwards and forwards. Small bit back to make this whole process more efficient. So real, large scale, real large language model development, and NVIDIA come to us and say, hey, DDM, so the rest, we love you, but um, we see this piece that needs accelerating. And so we go back into engineering and we develop some more stuff and we send it back to them. And now we've got maybe 30 different items in our historical roadmap, which we've done to accelerate this infrastructure. And we're talking to, you know, in that optimization, we're optimizing not only the storage piece, but the network piece, the ports on the DGX as the NVIDIA systems, the CPU, the GPU, wow. the containers, and the AI frameworks themselves, and the data path. So it's not just storage at the end of the network, it's, a, it's an integrated data intelligence platform that's reaching right across the network into the applications. It's thoughtful, is it what is. is. Well, there is a lot of intelligence in there. Yeah. This is really why these customers come to DDN. So Swisscom, we also announced that recently, that's a large national infrastructure in Switzerland. They're building uh, a national AI system to enhance the economy of Switzerland, and they chose DDN to accelerate their NVIDIA GPUs. Oh, that's cool. Uh, I'm going to have to look into that project. Yeah. yeah. But, they, but they do it because um, we are the best in terms of ROI. Um, you spend a little piece on the, on the data, and you get big returns back in the whole infrastructure. Links. And probably the ability to continue to work and innovate with agility with you as a partner in that circumstance. I mean, all we do, as I said, all we do is HPC and AI. Yeah. We're not distracted by other things. Our focus is entirely on these customers. And that's why I think we do very well in this, in this world because we listen to these customers all the time. The customers are NVIDIA, they're Swisscom, they're the large cloud providers like Lambda, um, like uh, Vulture, like Scaleway. They're all DDN customers, and they're, they're constantly interacting with us and asking for things and requesting enhancements and stuff, and we listen. We listen a lot, and we focus entirely on them and deliver the products that they want us to deliver. How do you prioritize your roadmap? Because I would imagine everybody wants everything from you. Fortunately, you, I, people are kind of asking for very similar things right now. So we're in this phase of AI nice. where, and this is one of the beauties of AI itself, actually. Think of HPC. We've basically got you know fluid dynamics, structures, we're modeling cars, we're modeling the environment. So everybody's got different requests. Now, now the magic of AI is you can take one multimodal model well, and it can work with words, it can work with images, it can work with video. So we're really condensing, like we're concentrating all the effort into a relatively small number of very, very capable models. And the consequence of that, and the consequence of the fact that NVIDIA really is the de facto environment means that Everybody, not exclusively, but mostly kind of asking the same things. We need to make this whole process, the end-to-end -end process, developing new models, easier, faster, simpler, accelerated, turbocharged, and do it with, of course, less dollars. And the data platform is the key area where we can make that happen. Well, that's awesome, and it does, you're right, it does make that easier rather than having it be just a whole bunch of ad hoc things yeah. coming at you. Yeah. You know, and, and I think that's actually, I mean, that's not necessarily in the spirit of collaboration, but I think it's representative of where we're at and everyone is collaborating and trying to build the same sort of mm -hmm. solutions here so that everyone can go off and change the world with AI and yeah. save lives. And so we see a lot of innovation out there with different customers. So they are doing different things, yeah. but it's all in one direction. Yeah, okay. It's all in one direction. That's and so when we make an enhancement for one major customer who's really doing something very special, we kind of know that's going to have an impact elsewhere as the yeah. rest of the world matures and sees these new opportunities for efficiency gains. I'm not surprised, especially with how long you've been in the game. I have two final questions for you. One, just because we don't have a lot of guests from Edinburgh, what is the conversation around AI like in Scotland right now? No, you don't want to know. <laughs> well, I do want to know, that's why I asked. <laughs> We're going to get into politics soon. No, it's not necessarily <laughs> politics. I'm just curious. You know, you're sitting at the pub having a cheeky pint. What, what is, you know, what's, what's the dialogue? Like, I live in the Silicon Valley. I'm immersed in it. You can't take a step without hearing someone say GPU. I'm curious if it's similar 
It is actually very similar. Um, so it's an extremely historic town. The castle's like almost a thousand years old, right, right in the middle there. You see it everywhere you go. The buildings are all ancient. But still, you know, we were, before I came out here, I met with some friends in the park. It was a bit cold, but anyway, we met in the park anyway. Cold. You're used to it, and Scott. We don't have normal conversations anymore. Like halfway through conversation, there'll be maybe something somebody says, and it's like, is that true? It's like, hey, hey, ChatGPT, or hey, Grok. Yeah. Uh, just give us answers on this. And then you get a real kind of human answering you like a normal person. And uh, you can settle the argument really quickly. So it's definitely becoming a part oh, of everyday life. I love that. It's a banter tool. It is. It's, it's, it's an argument settler. Oh, that was a better answer than I was expecting. Now that I expected you to have more answer, but that was an interesting answer. Wow, that's kind of fun. We actually, I need to start using that more when I'm deliberating, maybe even with our production team now that I'm saying that out loud. Last question for you, because this has been a lot of fun, James, and I knew you were going to be awesome. When we're hanging out, you, you're obviously seeing massive gains and improvement and innovation quite quickly. I, I'm impressed by a lot of the accelerated growth you're seeing. When we're sitting at this desk this time next year uh, in St. Louis for supercomputing 2025, what do you hope to be able to say then that you can't yet say today? I think we're going to be able to say that we've enabled a dramatic, again, a dramatic transformation in the world of AI. So as I said, our customers really are doing the most dramatic things. So XAI with Grok, massive customer of ours. They've literally built one of the largest AI supercomputers in the world. Yeah. Now, they're not doing that for nothing. There's going to be some very dramatic things. Remember that chat GPT moment a year ago or so? Oh, yeah. It really changed everything. Yeah, yeah. Two years now. We just had a, a two-year anniversary of chat GPT. So my hope is the same thing happens again. It's probably going to be around multimodal, mm -hmm. like just bringing in more comprehensively all these different forms of data uh, and basically enhancing our all experience by bringing in sound, audio, video, making it a more day-to-day -day interaction. And we think we are a crucial part of that story. Well, I think you're a crucial part of that story as well, James. And I Thank look you. forward to talking about that next year with you. Thank you so much for coming to hang out this morning. Oh, thanks a lot. It's been great. Yeah, this has been a joy. And thank all of you for tuning in. We're here in Atlanta, Georgia, day three of Supercomputing 2024. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.